State prosecutors are working on solutions to try and tackle the Supreme Court ruling that reestablishes parts of green country as Indian territory. That ruling expected to expand to four additional tribes within the next year. Two Works View's Erin Conrad digs deeper into how district attorneys and tribes are working together. Jurisdictional boundaries in upheaval after the Supreme Court rules to reestablish the Muscogee Creek Nation Reservation, also known as the McGirt ruling. State criminal cases involving Native Americans on Creek Nation land now being divided between federal court and Creek Nation tribal court. The Court of Criminal Appeals expected to expand that ruling to include the Cherokee Nation, Choctaw, Chickasaw, and Seminole tribes. Now, state prosecutors, tribes, and the Department of Justice frantically trying to manage that major change. Attorney General William Barr visiting the Cherokee Nation just last week. Cherokee Nation Chief Chuck Hoskin Jr. actively engaging with Congress on potential legislation in response to the ruling. At the end of the day, we want people protected. We want our sovereignty protected. Those two things are not mutually exclusive. They can both happen at the same time. I think it needs to be something that gives us some flexibility as tribes in terms of uh, what uh, the path forward looks like on jurisdiction. But anyone who thinks that the Congress of the United States is not going to act, uh, I think uh, misreads the Congress. And my read of the Congress is that they will act. The Muscogee Creek Nation taking a different stance. A spokesperson tells Two Works For You, quote, the Muscogee Creek Nation does not support any legislative fix to roll back to a broken system or in any way diminish the sovereignty that was just affirmed in the Supreme Court. Citing strong relationships with local leaders as proof, no congressional action will be needed in the wake of the decision. Jack Thorpe is the district attorney for District 27, covering Wagner, Adair, Sequoia, and Cherokee counties. We have probably the fifth largest district attorney's office in the state of Oklahoma. Half of his counties in the Creek Nation, the other half in the Cherokee Nation. His office now working hand in hand with both tribes. Instead of griping about it, what we've tried to do is reach out, help as much as we possibly can. We've agreed to help train the prosecutors for the Cherokee Nation. We've agreed to work with the police reports and give them in a deliverable format to both the Cherokee Nation and the Creek Nation. We're trying to do everything we can for the victims as well as these other sovereign nations. His office, as well as the other state prosecutors in Indian country, now meeting regularly to try to work out the massive unloading of cases to new agencies and keeping track of other cases that could eventually fall into that category, depending on any future court rulings. So we're, we're watching those cases. We have created spreadsheets. We've shared those with the Cherokee Nation and as well as the federal government. And we're identifying those cases that we anticipate once the Court of Criminal Appeals rules, those cases will have to be assumed by the Cherokee Nation or the federal government. So to break it down for you, here is a map of northeastern Oklahoma, and this is the Muscogee Creek Nation Reservation. Right now, this is the land the ruling applies to. But if the ruling expands to the Cherokee Nation, Seminole, Choctaw, and Chickasaw, this is how much of Oklahoma would fall under the jurisdictional change, impacting tens of thousands of criminal court cases in dozens of counties all across this side of the state. It's a case we are following closely for you and will continue to bring you updates. Aaron Conrad, Two Works For You.